All right, I'm going to start recording now. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Unconnoisseur. I'm Drew. My name's Matt. We're going to be your host along a little bit of a journey, and we're going to be two brothers rambling on about something called jazz music. Uh, at the time we started this, uh, it was actually March of 2023. Uh, we were just sharing albums that we were into for the week, uh, things like Scurry Vore, uh, the album Evo. Uh, I sent uh, Kiteman Orchestra over to Matt back then. Uh, a week later, he shared Ibrahim Malouf, and the album was Dysporus. Uh, and I'm still a big fan of, of Ibrahim. Oh, man, me too. Then uh, I started to look. I have some of my notes here. Uh, some of the bands I wanted to send over to you. Uh, and I never did get to this because we got down the rabbit hole of the uh, Jazzwise Magazine's top 100 jazz albums that shook the world. Uh, but in my notes, I have uh, Want to Send to Matt, Jan ba John Baptiste, Snarky Puppy, uh, the UNT 11 O'Clock Band, Lucky Chops, uh, Takura... I'm going to slaughter it, but Corroda. Oh, my goodness, yes. What an album, too. And uh, then I think what started it for us was the recommendation for Gregory Porter. <laughs> uh, and so I show just right at the end of March, we jumped over to the top 100 jazz albums that shook the world. Uh, starting with that, we kind of, uh, I think we're still chasing bunnies, so we didn't oh, kind of anything. Goodness. Uh, what no, was your? We're, we're not kind of anything. We're full throttle. What we are full throttle. <laughs> what was uh? What was your experience? And I know that we'll have the bios up uh, before this comes out, and you can read them online at theunconnoisseur dot com. Uh, but what was your experience with jazz before this all began? Well, being in the military band, especially. Um, I was I was exposed to to the big band jazz music, um, but unfortunately, before I joined the military, I had no jazz experience whatsoever, and I was a musician all through grade school and high school. So, jazz to me was kind of a new thing, um, just because I had never really listened to it, never heard it, never been you know asked to listen to it or forced to listen to it or even play it. So. For me, jazz brings up the great memories that I have of being in the in the Army Jazz Band and and you know the hours and hours and hours of practice and then finally leading up to the fun of the performance. So that's kind of what jazz is for me is just those those sweet memories of being with all your Army buddies and, and playing music and having fun doing it. What about you? Zero experience. Um, I think that probably over the years, uh, growing up, you may have shared some of that with me. Spyro Gyra, uh, might've been an album like that. And then, uh, uh Chuck Mangione. Oh, for... well, okay. Yeah. I take it back. We, we've listened to Chuck Mangione for a long time. Well, coming up with you as a trumpet player, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of that, that, that I think I picked up on, but I never really cared much to listen to it. Uh, I think my experience in music as a trombone player and a tuba player in middle school and high school, it was concert. Uh, middle school it was everything you could do to find the right note on a trombone, and that was probably normal for <laughs> middle school trombone players, and, and it still is. Uh, and then as a tuba player in high school, it was marching and concert band. Uh, so very strict, uh, read it as it's written, playing. And jazz isn't that. Um, my experience kicked off about a year and a half ago uh, with Lily, uh, my daughter, doing uh, jazz music for, uh, uh, she's a tenor sax player. So she started playing the saxophone, uh, really great instructor. You'll hear more about that in the weeks to come, months to come. But uh, for that, she went to a Texas jazz and blues camp where she spent a, a week in intensive uh, learning about uh, improv and soloing. Uh, she learned a lot about jazz music and on 
Friday, the, the last day of the camp, we were subjected to uh, all the combos and their songs that they'd been practicing over the course of that week. Um, I, I might have said it was a horrendous experience to my ears, uh, primarily because I hadn't been acclimated to jazz and I was not ready for what that was. Uh, but shortly after that, I started to really listen to jazz music as a music that I hadn't ever paid much attention to. And uh, I started to hear something that, that really had struck a chord with me. It, uh, that's where it started with me. And then, uh, then when was it? About January, you and I began uh, really. I, I, re I remember the conversation very well. You were recalling a traumatic event that happened to you and Lily and and we just started kind of kicking back and forth what what to listen to and, and kind of where to start and I I do I and we have Lily believe it or not to thank for this journey oh yeah because because um, without that conversation between me and you uh, we'd have never we'd have never hit this yep. hit this path yeah and then and then there's a whole world of jazz I mean um, you know, we, we're just kind of scratching the surface here. And that's what the exciting part is, is, is getting started with you guys and, and sharing our journey with you, but also hearing about your journey. Um, you know, how, how you came to start listening to jazz. Hopefully we can lead to lead some people to, to start listening to jazz. What do you think? I I think that's awesome. And I think that that's something that we forgot to touch on. Part of this conversation is that you and I get to spend a weekly conversation together, but everybody else out there that may be interested in jazz music, uh, maybe they've got somebody in their lives that's played it, listened to it, or uh, they're brand new to it. Uh, but a journey like this, finding somebody to go with or jumping in and commenting to us, we'll have information uh, available as well as a way to email us and to comment. Uh, below on any of the feeds that we've got out there. Uh, join us. Enjoy the jazz music as we go. And um, right now we're committed to the 100 albums. And doing that once a week, you can already kind of determine that that's almost a two-year program just to take one album a week. Uh, just so that it's not uh, like we're starting at the very beginning. Uh, what album... As of today, are you and I currently on? As of today, the real answer. Um, we are on number. Uh, Didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, that's there. okay. We're on number fifty-eight. Uh, we're, we're working with uh, Charles Lloyd uh, Flor, uh, Forest Flower album, and um, so we are a little bit ahead um, of, of you know the airing and the recording of the of the YouTube videos, um, and we. We don't want to lie to anyone. Again, we're we're going to be ahead, just so that we can uh, know what's coming up and give you some some good pointers. But uh, man, I am so looking forward to starting back at number one hundred and sharing the journey with everyone because I, I just I get so excited every week um, to hear something new and and you know just to, to <laughs> see what's interesting. See, and, and we're finding out a lot about ourselves about what kind of jazz we like and what kind of jazz we don't necessarily like. But I will say this, you're going to hear us talk frankly about jazz, but we are not here to criticize anyone's work. No. You know, that, that would be the wrong thing to say. And again, we're on connoisseurs. We're, we're not experts at this by any means. Um, but we love to listen to jazz and some of it we love more than others, you know, um, so, uh, I don't know. I'm just so excited about getting started. You know, I'm, I'm actually, don't... the more I've been thinking about this, starting back at 100 for you and I to catch back up to where we're at, it'll probably be another year before we've caught up to the albums. I think there's something really fresh about going back and listening to uh, the first 40 albums. Yeah. Um, listening to this week's album, um, a delightful precipice by loose tubes has been a whole lot of fun. Uh, and I do have to put the note out there. It may be hard to find the albums. Uh, I think in the first 10, 
uh, we found maybe three or four records that aren't online to find. Um, I'm a fan of YouTube music, um, Spotify. What about you? I do Apple music. So I get everything on my, my iPhone and, um, put it in my catalog, my library so that, so that I can pretty much listen to anything I want, uh, what are, what I need to, or what I want to all week long. So, but like you said, for loose tubes, I had to go and, well, I had to go and actually buy the record because, um, the week that we listened to this back in March, it was available on YouTube and we listened to some songs and heard most of the album, I think on YouTube music. Um, but going back and, and starting this, this channel, um, it's no longer available on YouTube. So I had to purchase the record, have it shipped from England. And, um, I'll tell you f- for a limited time, I'm going to post it up on the unconnoisseur.com. So if you want to Go check out Loose Tubes. Head over to theunconnoisseur.com. I know it's hard to spell. Um, once you type it in once, save it in your favorites and come back um, as much as you need to. But the Loose Tube special, that has both sides A and B. I got to be honest, the first 10 minutes uh, are not great. I'm trying to record a record digitally. Um, the record, unfortunately, had some skips and, and scratches that I couldn't overcome. So... Uh, but after about 10 minutes uh, on side A, it, I mean, it's it's pretty clear and pretty legible. So um, I don't really condone that kind of thing. And, and we'll later on, we'll get to why we don't condone doing that necessarily much later on. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, but for you to be able to join us on our journey, you're going to need to, you know, listen and experience what what we're doing. So. Loose tubes is part of that experience, and um, so I'm going to leave it up on the Unconnoisseur for a while, so that you know if you want to join us and, and have a listen, so that you can converse with us. Let us know what you think of loose tubes. We're back here. Uh, I, I wanted to take a moment here just to show what I think that everybody should. I'm going to jump off of uh, the here and go to my big face. I'm going to transition out here. Uh, one of the things that I think everybody should take advantage of here is go by your local bookstore or come on to jazzwise.com and get your uh, special publication, The 100 Jazz Albums That Shook the World. It was edited by John Newey. Um, quickly, just about that, John and his team, this is the third time they've gotten together to do something like this. Uh, First time in 1999, they just did a top 100 and kind of shook it out. 2006, they got back together and there was actually uh, an insert inside Jazzwise magazine. And in 2022, they wanted a full publication for this. So what we're using is a publication of the top 100. Uh, they decided not just to list favorite recordings or biggest sellers, the most collectible titles from jazz's first century of recorded music, but an annotated ranked chart and listening guide that looked at the landmark albums that changed jazz, changed lives, and brought the life-affirming music kicking and screaming into the mid-2000s. And so... I think the important part of that is that we've got to be reminded that these aren't the greatest selling albums. These aren't the ones uh, that have the biggest names to them, but they've had the biggest impact in jazz music. Uh, I think we'll find that in weeks to come, whether it's a record label that starts, uh, whether it is the fighting of the... (laughs) the big uh, music corporations, or it's just one of those that needs to be heard because it impacted um, jazz or people's lives. Well, and that's I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you from experience there, uh, there have been weeks where I preview um, while we're talking, you know, you know, look at the artwork and I prejudge an album. Um, and I have, found that i cannot do that because some of the ones that you look at the artwork on the album and you think oh, i probably it's probably not for me um and from the first 10 seconds that you put on that album the next week 
it may change the way that you think altogether of of of, of jazz. So again, stick with us. I know that, like Drew said, you know we've got a hundred to go. Um, it may seem daunting or overwhelming, but trust me, once once you get involved and get in on this journey with us, it's it it's gonna it's gonna be a change. It's gonna change you a little bit. I think that's a good time to bring up. We will be re. Uh, rating these albums personally our personal opinions will come out which is i think an important part of this dialogue uh we're two brothers we came up with very similar childhood uh matt left military i'm at home five five plus years younger than him with a, a younger sibling phil uh his life got shaped mine got shaped and we're back together uh, you can see from my gray hair, it's been a few years, but uh, we do come from a tight family. So it's not like we haven't seen each other in 30 some years. We are a couple of knuckleheads, according to our father. <laughs> but but I, I think that our opinions on these albums uh, should not shape your impact on them. What did you think? What did you feel? And as we rate them from one to 10, it's our it's our opinion. Uh, our opinion is ours. You're going to have yours, and we look forward to the comments down below. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe we missed something, and <laughs> after 42 of them, we've missed a lot along the way. So shout out <laughs> well, to Dick. That, that's because we're we're on connoisseurs, and and the funny part is is what we don't know is is hindering us sometimes. I think on on our. Uh, you know, on our own way that we look at the album and rate the album. So we, we laugh right. about that, and you're going to laugh at us too, which is fine, because um, you, you may be farther along in your jazz journey, and, and again, we're just kind of getting started, and um, you'll you'll hear some funny comments and, and, and you know, watch us and see us <laughs> laugh. And, and I hope you can laugh along with us, because oh, yeah. we, we have a good time. We are at the place of the top 100. Uh, that means for you and I, uh, let's see, I'm trying to change the uh, picture here so everybody can see it. Uh, you'll see that each each page, uh, half a page is dedicated to each album. Um, we have done our job of trying at best case scenario not to see what's coming next. So if y'all are pausing and zooming in on this, you'll already see that. My hand's covering it now, but uh, don't look to the next album. Uh, there will be some joy found in turning the pages and um, from there on out. But uh, anyways, the top 100 jazz well, album. I, I'm going to expand on that just a little bit, too. You know, we made it a point between us not to go that far, but it also helps you concentrate on the week that you're listening to. Mm. Um, it, it helps you not prejudge anything, I think, which I, I'm guilty of a lot if, of prejudging something. And if, honestly, if I was standing in a store looking at this magazine, I'd flip through the list and not remember, you know, who was number 100 and who was number 10. So it just helps you keep focused on uh, kind of what you're listening to and why why you're listening to it, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, standing in a store, you brought me back to something that we've talked about over and over and over again. What was your hope when listening to these albums each week? Uh, I was learning, we were learning jazz music, but there was some that you kept uh, reiterating week after week about the album or the yeah. artist. Yeah, for me, it's the recognizability. I, I want to be able to, in a, in a month from now or in six months from now or in a year from now, hear something maybe playing in the background. You know, maybe you're walking through the mall and you, you hear a song and, 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 and I, can, I can snap it into my brain and think, hey, I know that. That's loose tubes. That's that's number one hundred on our jet. You're not going to walk through the mall and hear loose tubes, but uh, <laughs> but you but we may come across an album in this magazine that you would walk through a store and hear it playing on the radio and and be able to recognize at least a general idea of hey I've heard that before. I know that it's on my journey. That would that's the big key. The big takeaway for me is the recognizability um, later later on in our journey. And I, I think that, uh, for me, it's, it, it has been true, uh, put it on shuffle and listen to it. But what's rang true to me recently is that it may not be the artist. It's a song. 
And that song, these are these are jazz albums. Some of these musicians have done jazz standards. We'll hear more about what that is in weeks and months to come. But you'll recognize a tune and go, wow, that was a Courtney Pine. Uh, that was a whoever it might be. And you'll think, wow, I, I recognize that tune. It may not be done by the same artist that you'd heard it on uh, or the album that you'd heard it on, but you'll recognize the tune. And there are thousands of jazz standards out there to to get into. Yeah. Um, I don't know that if uh, Loose Tubes has any jazz standards, but I'm sure <laughs> as a big band, they've played them. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Loose Tubes. All right. So this is the week 100. We're doing Loose Tubes. Uh, the name of the album is Delightful Precipice. Uh, recorded in 1986 on their very own label, Loose Tubes Limited. It came out on LP and CD. Um, and, you know, I it's just amazing. Unfortunately, they had a short career. Um, the, the Loose Tubes band didn't last more than a couple of years. They put out three albums, and, and I'm so glad that this is number 100 on the list. Um, it's an exciting album to listen to. There's lots of stuff going on. It, it it's not really um, jazz. Is here's the thing. You you got to expand your mind a little bit to to know that this is jazz because it kind of sounds like orchestra, um, big band jazz. Uh, on the Wikipedia page, the genre is listed just as jazz, and we'll, we'll talk about genres a little bit as as our journey goes on. Um, uh, but this this one is listed just as jazz. And, um, you know, they're originally, they're from London. So I, I think that uh, the 80s, I'm, I'm trying to think about London in the 80s and where they were musically. Um, Drew, do you got anything, anything more about London in the 80s? You know, I looked into London in the 80s and you think about a lot of the British bands weren't doing jazz. Uh, they had moved away from that when you think about somebody like the Beatles think about rock and roll and the direction that it was heading. Um, I've got a couple of slides up here with some bright and shiny, colorful 1980s stuff. Uh, punk rock was a big yeah. deal. I saw a lot of, uh, a lot of Mohawks from that time in, in the eighties and, and, uh, in the British scene. Uh, but that's not what, I mean, that's us on the other side of the pond looking at what happened in the eighties. Um, at that well, time, and, and like you said, uh, Sting and the Police, uh, U2, uh, you know, th let's think about some other 80s music that's going on in, in, even in the in the whole world in that time. So, yeah, jazz, probably not the hugest thing in London in the 80s. No, uh, but what was happening is uh, Graham Collier had been leading a big band workshop. It was a local community big band workshops. And this group of musicians got together. They were underground and separated, did their own thing. These tubes were on the loose. Uh, and in the, in the music, you'll definitely hear that. Side A, to me, is still pushing that, that avant-garde kind of stuff. But you can hear the orchestra and the big band in it. Uh, out of that time, there was a big... Uh, a push to bring the jazz back out. Uh, there were groups uh, uh, like Gary Crosby and the Jazz Warriors. Um, Courtney Pine is popping up at that time. These youth uh, in the British jazz scene were really driving forward what jazz music in that area could look like. And, and in the weeks to come, there will be saxophone players and pianists that come out of that earlier time frame. And then you start ch chasing the rabbit holes. Oh, yeah. Where did where did jazz first appear in in uh, England? Where did it first come from? Uh, how many people were influenced by it? What happened during World War II and V discs and uh, <laughs> I'm I'm leapfrogging, <laughs> but this has been the part of our journey. Is yeah. uh, the exciting part? But yeah. yeah. You, you look up on week one, and we're just listening to an album, man. It's, hey, check this album out. And you start looking at who's playing on that album. Start listening to other Loose Tubes albums and find out that uh, that not uh, many, well, many years ago, not far from uh, this decade, they got back together and did another album. And you see that album. What have they done differently in 15 years? How How would the music have progressed 40 years later for this band? 
And who's Graham Collier? Who's Courtney Pine? What happened in the 80s in the British scene? What happened in the 40s? And, and who were our music ambassadors going over there as far back as jazz goes? And that rabbit hole. Yeah, there's a lot to be said about Loose Tubes and what's going on. Uh, but they are a big band workshop. <laughs> might be orchestra music. Might be big band. But, man, it was surely fun. How, how would you describe to a non-jazz listener... Loose tubes. Would, what kind of genre would you put them in? I, you know, Matt, that's a hard thing for me. Um, this, again, we listened to it before in bits and pieces. I listened to all their stuff before. And, and here we are going back 40 weeks later and listening to them. Um, it's tough. Um, yeah. I, I would say that as true as they could be, they were big band. 20 plus members. Um, I had their roster up on screen just a moment ago and you can kind of see, uh, how many members are in the band, the instruments, there's guitars in there, there's a tuba in there and there's bass trombones. So it, it really is by every means an orchestra. An orchestra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kiteman orchestra, for example, out of, uh, out of the European scene used a lot of bizarre instruments and, and we would call it orchestra, but <laughs> What what we call it might be better for another day. Um, there's there's a touch of everything in there. Um, side A to me kind of reminded me of some avant garde stuff. Side B with some screaming guitar kind of reminded me of rock and roll. The fact that the horns are just wailing the way they do, it's jazz. Yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah. jazz. It's just jazz. Yeah, yeah. You know, unfortunately, the reason they broke up or disbanded, uh, was just, they couldn't afford it. Um, you know, the, the music scene didn't allow them to get paid what they needed to get paid. And, and so, yeah, they, they, they just, they kind of just disbanded. I don't think any of them left angry at one another and that's not why they disbanded or broke up. I just think, uh, the, the time had come where they knew that they couldn't sustain a, a, a life in, in that big of a, of an orchestra jazz band. And I think that I'd read somewhere on one of the articles that uh, it was a collective. So you've got 20 musicians and no real structured leader. I think there was some speculation in that. Uh, but you and I both learned this uh, in, in weeks to come, is that uh, big bands with 15, 20, 25, 30 players uh, in the 40s was one thing. And they dissipated for the same reasons. How do we support paying 20 musicians night after night after night? And it's funny, we're in 2024, and I think the conversation's the same with the economy. Prices yeah. are high, incomes are low. And you think about a band like that in the 80s in, in London uh, in, in England, how, are you, how do you justify 25 players on stage every night if you're not selling out hundred thousand shows, 70,000 yeah. seats, something like that. So yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that's a big question. Uh, the cool part is they did get back together. I, I didn't write it down. It was like 2013 or 14. Uh, it was that... 2014. Yeah. The celebrate the 30th anniversary loose tubes reformed for a series of concerts. Man, they're old. I bet they have gray hair like you and I. <laughs> I and that's that's funny. So we'd ask about this. I just looked up at the screen and I've got 1980 flashing and some of the yeah. things in their background. What was the 80s for you? Uh, well, okay. I, I was graduating high school in 1988. Um, unfortunately, I had to change high schools Uh Freshman and, and sophomore year, I went to one high school. And then junior and senior year, I went to a different high school. So that was a struggle for me a little bit. Um, moving from uh, a really, uh, the band, I was in the band all through high school. So I moved from a very large uh, band where I was a small fish in a, in a big pond to a much smaller band where I became a much bigger fish uh, in, a, in a small pond, which was good for me. Um, but, you know, high school graduation, uh, I left for the military to 28 days after graduation. So the 80s for me, I tell you, it was, um, well, <laughs> it was it was a little rough, you know. Um, I don't, 
I remember some of the music that I listened to in the eighties, of course, um, you know, you got the eighties hair bands, <laughs> Van, Van Halen, uh, my favorite, uh, musical group rush, my favorite musical group. Uh, unfortunately though, I didn't start listening to rush until later. So that's my love of rush. Uh, didn't come until probably the early nineties. Um, but those are that's kind of where I started in music was with the hair bands. Um, I saw uh, Poison in concert back in '86. Um, I, unfortunately, I never got to see Van Halen, which is one of the biggest regrets that I have musically is not seeing them um, play live. But the '80s for me, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, being a high school kid and and, and joining the military, so. What about you? What do you remember from the eighties? I was I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> you you were an old guy. I was a kid. <laughs> um, I, to me, I think that the both of us. I think it was interesting hearing you say that about your change in high school that year. Um, I remember being uh, down on Maple, uh, capture the flag, and all the things that we used to play in the little neighborhood, and then we went to the big big suburbia. Um, I think about the, the big hair, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. neighborhood kids that would do up their bangs, 12 foot tall and, uh, 12 cans of hairspray. They'd go out and, and go grocery shop and mom and dad come home with a cart full of food and three carts full of hairspray. So that their daughters get the, the big hair. Um, uh, I remember just from some of the pictures on how we dressed in the eighties, it was definitely pretty humorous. Uh, I was able to walk to school for most, well, for high school. I mean, that was kind of, kind of it. So we knew the whole neighborhood anyways, but, uh, you were involved in music for me, uh, coming in after your graduation from that high school, uh, everybody knew I was a rice kid and I didn't know what that meant. Um, you had had some pretty, pretty big shoes out there to fill from people like Miss Margenthal. Uh, Jack Schmidt had high expectations for me and my musical abilities. Sorry, Jack, I let you down on that one. Uh, but I, I think to me, the 80s were the, the big hair and the mullets and multiple layered collars and uh, and Oakley. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think I probably let, let Jack down every once in a while as well. So, Well, for all y'all back at Paul Harding High School, you probably feel like you let him down every day anyways. <laughs> and I, I think that's okay. Yeah. The, yeah. I think that there's more than enough time for us to talk about that in the future, but, uh, but music has, has shaped us. Uh, let's just say that from piano to marching band to you running off into the military band, we've been shaped by music. So having this conversation about jazz is just a new music genre. I think that's the biggest thing to say about that. But the eighties. Yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, we both were. Yeah. Oh yeah. So what, what are your first kind of first thoughts on the album? I, I know we've discussed it a little bit, but, um, you know, first... I think, I think that's interesting. Um, in the weeks to come, we'll probably get right into more of the album and our thoughts. Um, I, I think go back and listening to this, I heard so much more this week listening to that album. Uh, I don't think that I really paid much attention to the guitar sounds. Mm -hmm. I was listening for jazz music. What is mm -hmm. jazz? And this, it's a hall horns. It's exciting. It's, it was a unique album to me. And, and it's kind of, uh, uh, a collaborative effort, if you will, of all the different jazz sounds. You had some hard bop noise. You had some avant-garde. You had, here we go about genre of all the different types, but you had the avant-garde. You had the orchestra and the big band, the wave of sound. And then you had that fusion with the guitars. Um, I kind of personally hope that at one point in time they have a digital remastered album. Uh, just because the clarity of sound would be so phenomenal in any in instruments that, that was going on. Um, I think that side B to me was my favorite out of the two sides, uh, yeah, on that LP B, B stole it for me. Uh, what, what was your thoughts on the album? 
Well, um, the avant-garde stuff, it kind of got me. But when, you, when you're reading a little more about them, and, and remember, they're a collective, which means that there was really no one in charge. Now, that doesn't mean that they weren't you know, reading music or had some idea what sound that they wanted to come out. Um, but, I, but I feel like, like, like you, Side A was a little more um, avant-garde, um, you know, just kind of noise coming out and, and when they well, when they focus when they come together and, and and all work as a collective that's when they shine the best you know you know what i mean and and side b i i truly believe that um side b just it, it just takes all of that and just focuses it laser tight and and uh, and for me like you i like side b much much better so i think that brings us to something here mm -hmm. um ultimately writing uh and we're well, gonna we're gonna go over the time period that we had set out but i think as the number one first recording that we've done there's a lot of information and we'll go back over it but we said at the beginning we put our opinions on the table here um <laughs> uh, this has been as much backfill about who we are and not as much about the album uh, but i look back at my notes matt and that's what we did we listened to the album and a week later we just talked about it and i i think that it shaped the conversation because even over christmas we spent two hours talking and never did discuss the album <laughs> yeah. and, 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 I, and then we forgot to read it and, and, then, we, back. <laughs> <laughs> and then we forgot uh so in in the rating concept here um, I, I have my notes somewhere over here and I, I want to talk about that. We, we've already said that we're way ahead. We've been doing this now for 40 some weeks and chasing the rabbit hole. Um, Alice in Wonderland. I don't think we've ever seen the little queen yet. We haven't stopped falling into this, this hole of jazz music, but we came across some books that we read uh, I'm not going to go to higher ground yet, but Joe Cocker's book. Joe had talked about some things that uh, would help us, if you will. And this was the book called How to Listen to Jazz. Uh, Joe said in his book, when listening to jazz music, the craftsmanship, awareness, their creativeness, their spirit and drive. And then, uh, I don't know if it was in the book, this looks like a no. side note. I think you and I added the next one. The emotion. Yeah. And you had mentioned what I recognize the band. Uh, what I recognize the song if I was walking through the mall and it was playing. And I think that all of those take in to that consideration. Would we know it? Was it a, a great craftsmanship? Did the band really have their stuff together? It, were they swinging? Were they in the pocket? Uh, the awareness of each other. Uh, just, I'll talk about Miles playing his own song and somebody yeah. commenting to him later. Well, but... And we'll, we'll dive deeper into what the pocket means. Yeah. Um, and, and, and go through some of these in more, a little more in depth next week or in weeks to come. Oh, yeah. I should say we got a long um, way to go on. Yeah, we got a long way to go. And we, we don't know everything. We don't expect you to know everything too. So if you don't know what the pocket is, we'll, we'll explain it. I didn't know that until, until much later in this journey. That's right. Absolutely. I, I, if I'm honest, I probably still don't know what that means, but I use that term now. Uh, I, well, when we, they're... Yeah. We, we'll get we'll it. It. we get it. We get it. So with those in mind, listening to all these albums week after week, it kind of helps to frame what your opinion might be on it. I don't want to shape it. I'm not going to tell you what it should be. Uh, we will dialogue, and there may be a time when you persuade me or I persuade you to give it an extra half bump up or down, or we look back weeks later and go, oops. I'm, oops. We, I, we I, had I, an oops I, week. I owe the jazz gods an apology on that, but, <laughs> but maybe not, because it is our opinion. These are the thoughts on that. Um, and so the rating. Well, and uh, we haven't done a good job of, you know, doing, 
we do a rating on based how I it makes us feel. I think sometimes, or how much we enjoyed it, or how much of a rabbit hole we went down the week. Um, so, I I think I think we should just continue to do that. But keep in mind that the craftsmanship, the awareness, the creativity, and the spirit, and then finally mm. for me, the, the emotion part of it is where I probably give most of my uh, of my rating. How did it make me feel? Um, when I listen to it, uh, yes, the recognizability, the craftsmanship for me, yes, the the way the way that it sounds or how clear and, and precise it is, right? Uh, well, I think about, it. yeah, uh, yeah, later on, yeah, yes. uh, Well, I'm I'm going back to Sweetwater music. The two of us sitting there listening to a song together. Well, yeah, that's not is, fair. Are they together? <laughs> are are they together? Yeah. We'll talk about that one one day. Yeah, yeah. that's ours for now. <laughs> so, so I think we need to continue uh, or start just by you know how, how it made us feel for the week, and maybe later we'll give a little more in depth and how we can break this up as to you know what what are we going to give to the creativity side of it? What are we, what score would we give to the awareness and the and the spirit side and the craftsmanship side? But, um, I. I actually don't have my notes for what I rated it. So if you could inform me, do you have my note of what I rated it? Because I know what I would rate it today. Uh, I don't. Uh, okay. I'm going to kill off. Uh, uh, let me double check something here. I'm going to I'm gonna put us up on screen together. And then I'll go over because we do have the uh, spreadsheet where that can be found. Uh Jazz projects. I don't. I don't off the top of my head remember. Okay. All right. Do you have uh, your rating? I I don't, and I'm okay. I'm embarrassed. We came yeah. into this without that. Well, let's pause uh, the video then. All right. That's the end of the station identification, <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I I find it interesting. We we did. I did find a Google Doc where most all of our other ratings are already on there, and I know that. Uh, what'd you say? You've got them, you've got the notes in front of you starting from where? Uh, from week 95. Uh, the, well, the first couple of weeks, we kind of didn't know what we were doing. So I jotted notes down <laughs> on a piece of paper or, you know, on the back of my hand or something that week, just so I could first remember. First couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an album 58. I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's true. That's... <laughs> And so, I, so what we'll do, we'll, we'll just rate it. Let's let's just oh go. Boy. Let's just give them our number. You ready? Oh boy! All right, oh boy. I'll let you okay. go. All right. <laughs> so loose tips for me is, and we're going out of ten. So we're, we yeah, one one out of ten. Yep. Uh, I'm one, gonna one being the the worst, or we hope we don't Man. ever hear it again, and ten being, uh, let's listen to it every well, week. Ease up on that, because <laughs> I hope we hear it again. <laughs> oh, sorry. I do too. I'm yeah. sorry, Pix. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Uh, I just think that's so you know, that's I, important. I have I have mine written down, and it's this is a tough one going back to the beginning. Yeah, uh, I've learned so much. So, all right, what do you all got? Right. I'm going eight and a half for me. Are you really eight point five? Yep. Holy crap! See, I thought that was pretty good. I want to write it down this time. Yep, me too. Uh, let's see. I'm going back eight point five for you. Eight. Oh, I'm sorry. And an eight for me. Oh, you can't see that. No, I can't see that. <laughs> I held it up so you can see it, but you can't see it anyways. Uh, I'm not smart enough this week, next week. That's maybe. all right. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it um, out. We'll so figure eight out. and eight, five. Yep. Yeah, I didn't, you know, I I didn't hate it. I think that in, in the future, I will recognize it as loose tubes oh, yeah. um, because we are ahead. You know, there's not many more that coming up that are um, similar. There are some some similarities in some of the stuff that's coming up, but I think as far as recognizability for me oh, later, yeah. I'm going to be able to recognize it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, and I think that that's a shame, too, with the LP only. Mm -hmm. Never been digitally remastered. Never. Um, they could have remastered it after uh, the date of it. What was the album year 1986 86 yeah 1986 uh, so they could have done a digital release on it and as hard as it was to find 
I mean, yep. this is a serious record collection album if it's in the top 100. Mm -hmm. um, and for all of y'all jumping in with the magazine, in the back of the magazine, I'm just going to show the magazine again here up close and personal. In the back of the magazine, they do have the 1999 top 100 and they do have the 2006 top 100. Um, I know that there's some articles back there on the top three albums in this year's publication. Try not to look at those because <laughs> you'll start wondering how. Yeah. Uh, but you can look at what they've rated the albums in the past. That's jazzwise.com. You can pick up that magazine and join along with us. Uh, if nothing more, don't join with us. Find somebody to do this together with. Uh, a weekly conversation. I, I'm going to go all spiritual for a second. But I think there's a lot of people out there just looking for some connection. Um, and I think because of that, with everything else in the world today, it's important to have a friend for a journey. And I think that that's what, after 50 weeks, that I found. It's just so much fun to talk about a particular album. Uh, the people around us think we're crazy. Um, I, I know my father does. Um, but he thought we were crazy before. Now. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Mom, mom knew it. He thought it. Uh, but I, I think that if if you've got comments and feedback on the albums, if you don't like 8 and 8.5, if you think it should have been a perfect 10, I'll be happy to let us know. Uh, just remember, we're two goofballs on microphones listening to jazz music, and we're not connoisseurs. We are un connoisseur just yeah. having fun listening to music uh we appreciate the feedback in the comments uh, yeah so a solid eight five and an eight for me yep make sure that you uh, continue to check us out at the uh we will be putting up the numbers uh for our weekly discussion there i'll, I'll be sure to put the links to the youtube videos and uh, the wikipedia links for the artist uh if the artist has their own website i'll make sure to put those links in the in the weekly discussion as well for for our albums but head over to the unconnoisseur.com to check out some more information go to their websites we'll have those links check out those artists uh if you've got a concert nearby or within four hours <laughs> go check them out live uh i think that the live concerts will be just as good as uh, or better uh, and drag somebody with you if necessary, or just go ch check it out and chill on your own. Windshield time, listening to music, never hurt anybody. Never. Um, and while you're out there, enjoy some good jazz music for us. Um, so here's the, the normal way we would do this. We'd wrap up the conversation and go, oh crap, we're out of time. I've got to run into work. You've got an office ticket to do. What's next week's album, Matt? Oh, you have that in week, front of you? I do, uh, and I'm excited about this one as well. Number 99, uh, week next week, number 99, we're going to talk about Sons of Kemet. The album is Burn. Um, and, man, I I'll tell you what, this was another, uh, another good week. You will be able to find this music on Google Music and Apple Music, I will tell you that. Um, so, um, so at least you've got the, the, the ability to you know, hear the music without coming to theunconnoisseur.com. And that was Sons of Kemet, yep. Burn. Burn is the album. So I'll have the pictures up on the website, um, the links for the Wikipedia information for them as well. Uh, feel free to comment on the website. Please, yeah. please, please comment on the YouTube video because, again, this is a discussion. Uh, we want to hear what you think uh, as well as, of course, have our di weekly discussion with each other. And just like Drew said, find someone to do this journey with because it's way more fun with someone else it is <laughs> it is <laughs> it, yeah so sons just, of kim at burn find yep, somebody to listen I to just have with. one final question drew uh -oh. did, did did this album shake your world did loose tubes uh, shake your world you know um i, I think yes it shook my world i, I this has started out you bring some big guns out in the first 10 weeks. That's how I kind of feel. Uh, it really did. It shook my world for a lot of reasons. It shook me enough to wake me up to what jazz could be. Uh, it's not marching music. It's not concert music. It's not the bass line of a tuba. It's free-flowing, and it's everywhere. So what about you? 
Did it shake yeah, shake your it, world? It did. It did. It was an exciting week uh, to to listen to this. Um, you know, to listen to this group. It, it expanded my um, my eyes a little bit as to what jazz music was all about. Um, again, because I'm coming from the big band kind of swing, uh, big band music. This this one was was new to me. You know, as far as calling it jazz. Um, but yes, it did. It shook my world for sure. For sure. I'm curious to see how, uh, next week's oh, shakes you a little bit. Oh, I, I can't <laughs> well, wait. I can't I'm, wait to talk. I'm going to lean music. into the camera and, and just kind of, I'm willing to find out how it shakes you. <laughs> Cause I know how this one shook me. <laughs> yep. And, All and, right. And, hey, thank you so much for checking out the unconsumer, um, at, at our YouTube channel. Again, please post the comments uh, in, in the description below, and I'll have more stuff up at the unconnoisseur.com. Unconnoisseur.com. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Matt, as always, it's good it's talking to you. I look yeah, forward to this. Yeah, me too. All right. Cheers. All right. Bye.